Hello YouTube! Do you know what Mercator, Vesalius, and Erasmus all had in common? Well, other than being some of the Renaissance smartest scientists, they all studied here, in the beautiful town of Leuven. And we are here as well today as we're going to visit the university's library. Well, that sounds like a great idea. They have been collecting books for almost 600 years after all. Unfortunately, the library is a bit meh. Most tourists only visit the library to enjoy the view from its bell tower. The historic library collection itself got lost. No less than four times. The French rarely play the role of the good guys in Belgium's history. So it should not be a shock that they are also the first bad guys in this YouTube video. In 1795, only two years after beheading their king, and then invading what is now Belgium, the French revolutionaries decided that Leuven's 400-year-old university was way too ancien regime. When the French abolished the university in 1797, they took the oldest, most valuable books of the library with them to Paris. What is left of the collection of the 80,000 books ended up in Brussels. But only a couple of years later, Napoleon got defeated in Waterloo. And as soon as he was gone, the University of Leuven was back. As was the library. For the next century, the university collected a library that was bigger and richer than the original. But then, the Germans rarely played the role of the good guys in Europe's history. So obviously, they had to be the second antagonists in this video. In 1914, the German army took a shortcut through Belgium on their way to Paris. In the chaos of the early days of World War I, retreating German forces got hit by friendly fire from advancing German troops nearby Leuven. That was an embarrassing mistake to make, so the Emperor's generals covered it up and blamed the scuffle on the locals in Leuven. The revenge was tragic. More than 200 civilians, including women, children, and priests, got murdered. More than a thousand houses got set on fire, including our library. 300,000 books got lost in the fire, at least 2,000 of them were medieval manuscripts in very early prints. The pointless massacre in Leuven was such a big scandal that after the war, the United States donated a brand new library to Leuven. Both the Neo-Renaissance building we are visiting today and a new collection of 900,000 books, the university's biggest collection yet. Unfortunately, the Germans came back. During the Battle of Leuven on the 16th of May, 1940, the still new library got hit by artillery and caught fire. As the city was deserted during this battle, it isn't completely clear if it was a German or a British bomb that set the library on fire. All 900,000 books got lost in the fire. Again. But after the war, once again, the US, who are definitely the good guys in this video, paid for the rebuilding of the library both for the building and for a new collection, the fourth collection already. So, as Belgium hasn't been invaded since World War II, this fourth collection must be the one we are visiting today, right? Leuven lost its library for a fourth time, or half its library. You see, we don't really need invading neighbors to make life complicated in Belgium. Shortly after World War II, 
we started reorganizing our country so that the Dutch-speaking North and the French-speaking South got more autonomy. In the 60s, the way education was organized got split according to language. As a result, the University of Leuven got split in two. The Dutch language university stayed in Dutch-speaking Leuven, while the French-speaking university moved to a purpose-built new town called New Leuven, or leuven la Neuve. Together with the university, the library got split in half. For some books, there wasn't much debate about who got what. But the books both universities wanted got divided according to catalog numbers. All books with an even number stayed in Leuven. All books with an odd number went to the new university in leuven la Neuve. If you want to see Leuven from above, you can visit the library every day of the week. But if you want to visit the fifth library collection yourself, you should know that the reading room is only open on Saturday when it's not in use by students. <laughs>